makes you start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to be sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the wood. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. My name is Rivers Langley. Pat Riley. This is a good night, man of the hour. Tower of power, too sweet of a sour. And uh, we are here at Disgraceland. Yes. With, Eating uh, out peanut butter and banana sandwiches, shooting out TVs, and just waiting for Priscilla to get up. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> She's coming down the stairs in her gingham dress in a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here with our fantastic guest. The king of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Thank you, Ron Vafcock. It's weird when I have to say my own name. <laughs> yeah, we, we like to put people on the spot like that. <laughs> and the king of Scranton. Do y'all get in wars with the king of Prussia? No, no. They have, <laughs> they have them all, so. <laughs> they do. They, they win. Is it uh, Sherman Helmsley from King of Prussia originally? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a really. I, I don't know much of the Prussian history of Pennsylvania <laughs> okay. or the Scranton or, or the Jeffersons history. Yeah, of Pennsylvania, I mean, I'm talking case. about William Scranton uh, and his, you know, uh, the failed run for the presidency. Joe um, Biden's from uh, Scranton. Yeah, right? till he was like nine. Okay, he milked that so. He's like, I'm from Scranton. Like, dude, you moved when you were nine. <laughs> so let's all. just tone it down. A he, little the yeah. Scranton thing is mud. Is like, you want to milk it? You know, can you and, blame him? And from what I remember, Scranton has the closest Waffle House to uh, New York. York City. Is that so. true? Really? Yeah, go. we do have a Waffle House. Yeah, I believe so, because I was uh, one day I was really wanting some uh, hash browns. I was like, you know what? How far do I need to go to get proper hash browns? Yeah, so you're getting a little homesick. A little house sick. Yeah. You will. Yeah. And actually, let's not forget the Scranton Wilkes Bar Yankees. Yeah, it used, used, used to be the Red Barons, uh, oh, which shit. was the feeder team for the Phillies. And then one time I came back home and I'm like, Where? And then it was like all the Yankees. So now it's a way more successful team. But they used to do this um, commercial growing up. And my buddy Rob and I used to sing the commercial in the middle of class in high school. And it was, it was one of those like homemade commercials for the Scranton, Wilkesbury, uh, you know, Red Barons. God, I love those. Uh, here it is. Ready? Yes. Scoring runs. Making plays. The Red Barons will go all the way. The Red Barons. The Red Barons! <laughs> the excitement's here! Come see the Red Barons! Play the Toledo Mount Hands this Friday! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Got local, local jingles are. Yeah. Man, oh, Fred von Richthofen would be proud. What was the one it? for the Jacksonville Suns? Getting hot with the Jacksonville Suns! <laughs> I love it. I love that guy. He's like. What do I do? Oh, I write jingles for local sports teams. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember the one for the Columbus Red Sticks, but the 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 Red Sticks. The yeah, Red Sticks. Is that, Wait, Columbus, Ohio, or no, Columbus, Georgia. That's, that's oh. the nearest minor league team. That's a, that's they're, a they're Cardinals affiliate. Now. Well, or, they're they're done you know. now. Uh, there's no more Red Sticks. But uh, yeah, a real Red Stick is a uh, is a term for an aggressive uh, boner Creek Indian boner. <laughs> 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 it was during the uh, Creek Indian War. There was the Red Stick and the White Sticks, and the White Sticks were the ones who were helping Andrew Jackson beat the Red Sticks. So it was basically this Muscogee tribe was cut in half, and half of them were supporting the white people, and the other half were resisting, and the resistant half were called the Red Sticks. Wow. So There's that's a lot why. of history behind these yeah. AAA names. You know, do you know what yeah. mud hens are supposed to be? <laughs> uh -oh. No, yeah, what is that? I don't know. I thought it was just a bird. <laughs> I mean, there's some uh, 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 apocryphal story about, like, they're having mud in the outfield, and so ducks would come out there, but mud hen is a different bird, so I, I, don't, I don't believe that one altogether. What's the, what's the mud hens? Toledo what's, mud hens. Toledo, oh, okay. yeah. yeah. My favorite of all time was uh, Atlanta, Georgia, during... Uh, before they got the Braves, their minor league uh, team that played there was the Atlanta Crackers, <laughs> and uh, and when they had um, when the Negro Do they sell those throwback jerseys, yeah. <laughs> um, but when the the um, when they had the Negro leagues, you know, they would always do the thing where it would be usually like. Uh, the the city black, what their local team right. was, Birmingham Black Barons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. For uh, for Atlanta, it was uh, the Atlanta Black Crackers. <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. wow. Yeah. The Atlanta contradictions. The yeah, Atlanta oxymorons. <laughs> Atlanta paradox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually a great name for a sports team. Actually, it would be. I yeah. mean, if they're like doing things like Miami Heat, just yeah. like a, a, an, a, an abstract noun. The making whoopee. <laughs> Is that, is that, that was real? their there was their hot their hockey team their main minor league hockey team was the Mike and Whoopi. 
and they would have a uh, they had a very strong uh, rivalry with the Jacksonville Lizard Kings. So. <laughs> Name for Jim Morrison, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, was this actual MLB stuff, or is this like no? This is league? like minor league hockey. This is like you know the crack league. We're like Scranton is king of like the minor league teams. We had. The Red Barons were turning out the Yankees, and then we had an arena football team for a while. Oh, Remember that? It was like yeah. Joe oh, yeah. Namath owned that. And uh, Bon Jovi, right? Didn't he own <laughs> Or Bon team? Jovi, yeah, yeah. Bon Jovi oh. owned like the Philly Soul. I yeah. Think. Yeah, we had like, so we had that, and th- those always have the best name, like those, like like the professional lacrosse team, and then they have <laughs> arena football. It's always like the the Thundercloud, <laughs> like, the Storms with the Z. Like they have the worst <laughs> Weirdest names. It's never like the Patriots. They're they're always the worst names. Like the the Atlanta Buzz. <laughs> it used to be a Missouri Swarm, but that was basketball. I think the, the one I love for uh, basketball. There's the Fort Wayne Mad Ants. Yeah, I think that's a rad name. <laughs> I, I did well. Me and my my friend were looking at uh, minor league basketball teams just for the purpose of like having a reference in a sketch, uh-huh. and we found the Fort Wayne Mad Ants was the funniest one we, that we found. <laughs> that's that's pretty. And I started looking up. They have fucking really fly gear. Like they have like really, some really cool. Yeah, really like, ant can, gear is what like, they, they have. have. Really, yeah. It's, I guess it's really. <laughs> do they call their fr- their fans the Colony? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> we had it in college. I went to the University of Scranton, and we were just the Royals. Uh-huh. So it was like that, like going back to like an abstract noun yeah yeah but then we had a mascot and it used to be the royal rooster which was just this like drunk <laughs> student in this like purple <laughs> rooster costume <laughs> and it was hilarious and everybody looked because my brothers and sisters used to go there and yeah. like and when i was younger i would go to the basketball games with them i see this like purple rooster running around and everybody loved it and then they changed it to like the royal knights but the night costume they got was too scary because <laughs> all the children who came to the basketball game started to cry whenever he went up to them. <laughs> so that like lasted for one year, and now we're like the Royal Wolves, which is just dumb. It's like what the? Is it a, like a blue wolf or something? It's like, like that? a purple, like it's like a gray wolf, and it's like just this. <laughs> Wolf with like a purple jersey on. I'm like, why can't we just have the rooster be like yeah. hilarious? Yeah. <laughs> when you first said the knights, I thought it was gonna be a drunk guy in a full suit of armor or something like <laughs> no, that. No, yeah, it was just like this weird ten thousand dollar costume that <laughs> they were like, it's, it's too a, scary for. I'm children. imagining what look, like what Triple H came out in at uh, WrestleMania last like, year, yeah. the golden war kind of costume. Yeah, yeah, with like spiky pads, like almost like a golden Road Warrior type yeah. thing. I like when teams don't take themselves too seriously and they have like fun, like mad ants. That's oh a, yeah, that's a rad dude. Montgomery's uh, minor league team is the Montgomery Biscuits. Uh, the mo- uh, what do they? Their their mascot is a biscuit who uh, his mouth is open and his tongue is just a square of butter. When that's they great. win games, really? they pour gravy on him. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, they dump the yeah they dump like no, the when Gatorade they win, dump the Gatorade Gatorade when they, win, they turn on the gravy hose and then they have a party. <laughs> <laughs> all the girls have gra- they they cheerleaders do all they do like little gravy wrestling yeah, yeah. fights. <laughs> I, I want to see this team really badly. Yeah, they play I, right on the riverfronts in, in uh, Montgomery. I love. Here's what I hate that the South has done to us is that I love bis- biscuits and gravy. Yeah, I love it. And whenever I go and I just got it, I was up in doing a show in Lake Arrowhead, California. And they were like, they did this little thing. They were like, we have biscuits and gravy. And I was like, oh, that'd be awesome. And I had it, and it wasn't good. Yeah. It is like the most fucked up <laughs> breakfast food. And I always get it, and the gravy comes out too sour. Because mm-hmm. when I was in the South, the biscuits and gravy was yeah. amazing. Yeah. And anywhere else, I get my hopes up, mm-hmm. and it's like... People I've, think they can do it, and they always screw it up. I've been fooled into getting biscuits and gravy twice now at Norm's. Oh, no. oh the, yeah. the, Denny, the like Denny's, sour. Yeah. Denny's isn't too, too bad. The best in town, I find, is Pans. If you go to Pans to get biscuits yeah, and gravy. Yeah, well, Pans is an expensive one, though. It's like but. three bucks. So Yo, Just a biscuit and gravy? Yeah, yeah. Because everything else is. Yeah, it's like it yeah. is kind of twelve ninety five for like eggs and shit. Is that yeah. the the Pulp Fiction diner? Yep. Or are they yeah. just impersonating the Pulp Fiction No, diner? no, that's the Pulp Fiction one. It's one of the few uh, Googie-style remaining yeah. uh, diners that in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, which also might be coming the wrecking ball, but it looks like it's got a stay of execution now. Yeah, because people got freaked out and they're well, like, yeah. "Don't tear it down." I love the norms. Well, they <laughs> well, keep doing that in Los Angeles. They keep tearing down these beautiful buildings and then building like a Jamba Juice eight months later. Yeah, and yeah. then everybody complains like, "There's no history here." It's yeah, like, well, yeah. It's like, well, you got to save the <laughs> save the cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That norms. Uh, that's that's my. Uh, that's always my go-to. And how bad is the food at norms? Did you ever go? I've never gone. Okay, here, let me tell you something. Because I've only heard. <laughs> I've, I've only heard. 
things that aren't good. Nor- Norm should hire me. Frankly, Norms, if you're listening, I'm your guy because I'm your, the biggest Norms fan. Was it, in is LA. it better than Denny's or it's IHOP? It's better than IHOP, better than Denny's. I always go there, and here's my selling point: is that okay. even if it's even if the, food, the food's good, I think it's it's just it's just solid. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just right down the middle. But you can get sirloin steak, eggs, hash browns, and pancakes. Three pancakes for nine dollars. Okay, now here is my counterpoint. <laughs> I am willing to pay more for a sirloin steak. <laughs> like when I go went to Vegas and they're like, we have $4 steaks. I don't want a $4 steak. I am more than willing to pay $8 for a steak because they're making a profit on that. And yeah, I want to yeah. know where the fuck are they making their money? I don't money? know. It's real greasy and real salty. That's a but lot it's, of food for $9. I know, that's what I'm saying, man. It's like the food's just all right. But for 9 bucks, I mean, it, it can't be any worse. Than it can't be any worse than a steak at a Golden Corral. That's just, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And the, you don't have to watch you know kids stick their fingers in the chocolate you know, water. I, live, <laughs> I, w- I live walking distance from a sizzler and i've never been to the sizzler that i live walking i, I went and from. once took a look at the menu and i, I don't want this shit i uh, i went to a golden corral once and you uh, go get that sushi at the sizzler <laughs> they have the sushi <laughs> well, no, no, it's right it next lo- to the frozen yogurt oh, yeah. it, it looked like God. they had just one they just had like a little bit of steak and like some mashed potatoes on the side and i was like i, was, I want some french fries some junk food up in here i, I don't want to <laughs> eat this crap you can make it home i went to a i went to a golden corral once and uh they had a little league team there yeah which is just bad news you know bad news the have a little league team at any restaurant, like let alone baked potatoes with their mitts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but one of the kids uh, got one of the little like tenderloins, like the fake uh, filet mignons, and dipped that son bitch in the chocolate fountain. Yes, oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> that's what happens when you give kids freedom. Yeah, they oh. use it. Hell yeah, don't don't trust the chocolate and fountain the kid, to, the, the, to the team of the Atlanta aggression. Or whatever yeah, and they were was. just like the the kid was just like freckle face, overweight, and he's just like, Daddy, I'm making a chocolate. Steak, you know, oh, just like oh god, god. that is just <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> it's the nastiest thing. That was always my fear when they when they first rolled out that chocolate waterfall. All I just I just saw a thousand. Hand, little tiny hands sticking their nasty little I, 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 I blame thing. the fucking foodies. They're starting young now. They'll be dipping pretzels and bacon <laughs> in that shit before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> So last year, Ron went on an extensive tour of the United States. Mega tour. Driving a, uh, what What was the car? Like, it explain. Was a, a 1975 Mercedes-Benz 300D. <laughs> so the W115 chassis. It's, um, Benzes are kind of known. I don't know if actually people know this, but, um. I got sponsored by a company that restores them. Yeah. Uh, and this company's called Mercedes Motoring. And everyone was like, how, how did you hook that up? And actually, I'm friends with the guy who owns the company. And I just offhandedly mentioned the tour. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do a little tour of the U.S. And he's the one who approached me. He's like, you should take one of my cars because I put 12,000 miles on the car. And it's just it's just not a big deal. Like these cars that he's selling that of the, 75, the 70s Benzes, they go at, at least – 350,000 miles. Yeah. yeah. Most of them will hit half a million. If, yeah. you're, if you're not an idiot with it, you like take care. Like you get Regular oil changes. Oil changes. And you, you check the oil when you fill it up, uh, which I love doing because it made me feel like a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah I put 12,000 miles on it and everybody was making fun of me. Everyone was like, that thing's going to break down. I did not have uh, one single problem the entire tour. Uh, uh, the, the fan belt squeaked and I had to have them fix that. It took 10 minutes and they did it for free because it was like, like a 40 year old car. So, It'll have quirks, you know, like with stuff like with the vents, you know, over time that stuff will happen. But when it comes down to like the engine and the transmission, it's kind of like a, almost like a lifetime warranty. It's, they'll just, they'll just always go. So like, you just don't have to deal with that. That yeah. whole transmission breaking down at 120,000 miles, you know, on a Ford. Right, from right. From the mid 90s. Like yeah. that just doesn't happen. Man. That's uh, we're sponsored by Norms and Mercedes this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mercedes Motoring. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so you, uh, and you, it's a beautiful car. I saw photos of it. It's yeah, it kind of just like amazing. I used to be that kind of guy who just I don't know. I just like the cars as a thing to get me from point A to point B. Like I don't give a shit. I, yeah, I drive a ninety nine Honda with two hundred and thirty thousand miles, and then I started driving that, and it's it's different. It's like forty years old, but it was like 
the pinnacle of luxury in 1975. So it has like electronic windows. Oh, wow. And yeah. These locks where I'll lock my door and it locks all the doors and the trunk. <laughs> oh, does it have heated seats? <laughs> no heated seats, but it does have like super cold air conditioning. Like that was like, I, I was worried about that and it like worked perfect. And then it's funny because like the pedal, you really have to like, I was constantly having the pedal to the metal because it's not that sensitive touch pedal we have today. But it changed my mind about like, I don't know how I get from point A to point. I, I get how people are into cars now because it just changes your your outlook and how you drive and it like it, i don't know i just i loved everything about it i'm trying to figure out one. a way to buy it i had to give it back oh yeah you no know, because well you gave it a name too right yeah you know, i came with a name named oh. after the color harvest beige so its name is harvey oh and, okay uh, <laughs> and yeah i was like <laughs> that's like, why you know i dropped it off and i was just like i had a real moment when i dropped it off i was like I was like saying goodbye to like a dog. Like, 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 thank you. Like, I was like, I'll figure out a way to get it back, Harvey. You just wait. <laughs> wow. I wasn't on gas. Uh, like 25, 26 miles per gallon. Damn. It's an old diesel. Okay, I was about to ask, was it a straight up diesel? It's an old di- diesel. And um, I kind of, you know how like the gas prices like plummeted for like that pack that, of like th- two, three months? That yeah. Window. Yeah, I kind of missed that window, which sucked. Oh, uh, man. Because <laughs> diesel's more expensive in most places, but it's, Diesel burns do- dirtier but more efficient, you know. Yeah. So, but when it does burn, it burns a little dirtier than regular gasoline. But like, it's diesel's just like dirty jet engine fuel. Yeah. I got talking to a trucker at a truck stop who explained. He's like, sat me down. He's like, let me tell you something about diesel. <laughs> and I just let him go for twenty minutes and learned all about diesel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was like it was. I love driving it. I love that like the the shakiness of the car. And yeah. You start it up. It's like a car that lets you know it's working. Right. And it's so it's shaky around town. But then when you drive it on the highway, it gets smoother. And like the faster you go, the smoother it gets. So oh, it's wow. kind of like the reverse. Of a lot of other cars today. Yeah, yeah. That's our shaking as soon as you press on the You know, dare gas. we say, you know, you introduced, do you remember Farfig Nugan? Yeah. Driving pleasure. Yeah. Remember that? It was some German concept word that was a BMW. It was used in a Volkswagen. It's Volkswagen? Really? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is exactly that. A lot of times, my buddy who uh, restores these cars, his whole thing is uh, it's like vintage bend restoration, back roads exploration. So his whole thing is when he goes somewhere, he tries not to take the main highway at all. And he'll spend an extra day driving just taking back roads because, like, that's that journey is yeah. the destination. It's yeah. part of the fun. And so I did that as much as possible. And that's where I had, like, the most fun on this trip was when I wasn't on a highway going 80 miles an hour. Your pictures were incredible, by the way. Everybody oh, thanks, uh, listening should check out uh, Ron on Instagram. I think it's at Hey Ron. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. at Hey Ron. And then I'm actually uh, – I, I got to show you guys because I want to see – I am making a book of them. Yeah, so yeah. So actually I'll, I'm going to make a book of them because people – I was like, who's going to buy this? But people keep asking me for it. So I was like, all right, I'll make a book. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, he took, a, took pictures of – the uh, of the bins parked in front of landmarks and random theaters. Yeah, it was and- like my very illegally parked tour. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that was. I was like, man, he just, just jumped the jumped the curb. He's going got, for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I was parking in front of Immobile, actually, in front of the USS Alabama. Oh yeah, and yeah. I, par- I parked like. I mean, I just drove up on this grass, <laughs> and then people were looking at me, and I was like, it's all right. And then I was just taking photos. I couldn't get the right ones. So I had to repos- I had to reposition that car. Like, every, you know, every one of those photos, you're like, wow, how did he get that? Because I spent like a half hour, like, repositioning it, going to take the, oh, nope, that's not it, going back. Yeah. And then as I was driving out, like, a state trooper was driving in, and I just was like, all right. I had oh. so many almost, I got, Oh, I had so many close calls with the police. Was that that was the clo- was that the closest to Mobile or no? The closest was when I actually got pulled over uh, because uh, I kind of drove on expired tags for literally the entire time. Oh, okay, <laughs> like super expired tags, like um, like 2012 expired <laughs> tags. <laughs> like we just didn't get a chance to get them, and I was like, ah, it'll be fine. How many miles total yeah. was it? Twelve thousand. <laughs> Driving on back roads That's too, you know, awesome. with all three. The- like, in, uh, I mean, it would be the kind of expired tag. Where you'd see a cop behind you, and like, I don't have to turn right here, but I'm turning right now because you could see that he's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of a little, uh, that was a little, cr- that was definitely pu- pushed me outside my comfort zone. Where, where did, did they you pull get- you over for out of state tags that were expired? Yeah. They, they pulled me over for out of state tags in Georgia. And man, the best performance I had on the tour. <laughs> Was the one I gave that officer. I was like, "Oh, sir, I just got a deal. I just, I just picked this car up." And hey, man, you know when you get a deal and you just are sort of like, "Whatever, I'll figure it out." And the guy's like, "Yeah, I hear that." <laughs> and he's like, "Well, he told me he's like, if you get pulled over here and you get a cop who isn't understanding, what they can do is they have this like weird seize law. Yeah. They did a thing on John Oliver about mm-hmm. it where they could just 
take the car. Take the car. And yeah. then that car is now the property of that police department in Georgia. Yeah. So I could not wait to get the hell out of Georgia because I was so afraid that, you know, because I got, I got California plates driving through the South. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. In this car. That Where are you going, hippie boy? Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, and this t- You running biodiesel on that, son? Yeah, mm. I smell French fries. Yeah, it turns heads, this car. Yeah. So I was like, uh, so I was Where, a little nervous. Where in me. Georgia did you get pulled over? Um, in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Which is like a weird Atlanta town. cops are pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, know? at the end of the day, I'm a white male. So I was going to say, not, they have know. a lot of murders and Yeah, they don't, they, you don't with. really get pulled over at all in Atlanta for, for any traffic offense unless you're driving on the wrong side of the road. You know? I, yeah. I drove up in New Orleans. Uh, there was this great park there called, named after Louis Armstrong, and it's uh-huh. Armstrong mm-hmm. Park, and it's just, and it's lit up at night in this beautiful archway, this, you know, Armstrong, this giant marquee. And I was like, I want to get a picture of the car underneath that. So I waited till like middle of the night, like two in the morning after a show. And uh, my buddy and I went and I had to drive up on the sidewalk and then drive through like, like, you know, those concrete pylons yeah, that yeah. are there. Like I had to weave around like a shit ton of those, like uh-huh. squeeze the car through, park the car. And I was so nervous to do it. And then some local was like, uh, dude, in that part of town, as long as you're not murdering someone, the cops don't give a shit what you do. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, no problems. Nobody like bothered me at all. So wh- where uh, where did you start the tour? Oh man, you know Los Angeles, California, and yeah. then I went to Covina. <laughs> oh, you went to Steve, Steve, yeah, Fernandez. Steve Fernandez Chatterbox show. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to start in like a place where it's like because I was doing like you know these like you know hour long shows and you know you don't get like a chance to do like an hour so you're like yeah I can do an hour and then you gotta like remind yourself like oh I can do an hour and you just so I did that in San Diego and Phoenix where I started doing comedy yeah and in San Diego I go down all the time so I felt okay good and then I started going to like Albuquerque and like Pueblo Denver Omaha. Iowa City, uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, like Cleveland, Cincinnati, like a ton of cities in Pennsylvania, New York, and then drove down to New Orleans uh, from D.C. and then bounced around the south like crazy, then hit up Austin and boom, back to L.A. So that, was, that was three months. 12,000 miles, three months. There were like, like 34 cities and I think it was 82 shows. Wow. Damn, dude. <laughs> so, and it was like, you know, the longer shows would be – you know, in the major cities, I'd be doing like kind of more showcase sets, yeah. Just around like Chicago, just kind of doing all the shows that yeah. Chicago has to offer, and then in between, I'd be stopping off in like Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania, or Cincinnati, or Cleveland, and then doing like my super long sets. And uh, it was, you know, I actually just totaled up. I was really diligent about like taking receipts with my phone, yeah, because I knew it was going to be one giant tax write off. And um, I actually totaled up how much I made and how much I spent, and it's like to the dollar. Yeah, like I just literally <laughs> completely completely broke even. Broke even. <laughs> really? Yeah, like how right much, down to the. If dollar. you don't mind me asking, how much was it to to I, do the tour? I made um. Well, I made between what I made on the stand up and what I made like with merch sales because I really dropped my shoulder into merch, which is the only way you can do this. Is yeah, uh, I made seven thousand eight hundred and one dollar. Okay, <laughs> so seventy eight hundred bucks, and yeah. then that's kind of what I spent on the road between gas. I could have did it a lot cheaper. Yeah, but I don't know. I also just like I well, want to yeah, eat did, where I want to eat. You, you know, didn't lose yeah. any money, and you can't put a price on fun when yeah, it's all done. I, yeah. I could have. I mean, I could. I guess I could have like eaten at McDonald's, but I, like, I don't. But it would have made the McDonald's. it would have made the tour so much more like it would have made the tour painful if you had to eat McDonald's every time and yeah. stay at Motel Sixes. And, I wanted to like you know I actually am, I didn't even stay in a I only stayed in hotels a couple of times like when um when I when I did a gig sometimes they offered a hotel. Other times, um, I like it would be like every like once every three weeks, I would just be like, "Fuck it, I'm getting a hotel," and I'd find like a deal on my phone. But for the most part, I actually stayed with comics, and I I figured out how to do it. First of all, you can't rely on comics for anything. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> you think like, oh, they'll have pillows and blankets. No, they won't. And yeah. the pillows and blankets they have, like no offense Are to the disgusting. people I stayed with. I'm so thankful. <laughs> but some of it is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And I'm a particular dude. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I know I can be kind of intense. Yeah. So I went and I basically bought the Mercedes Benzes of Airbeds. Yeah. It was like 150 bucks. It was queen size. It had the pump inside of it. Oh, yeah. Dude, you oh, just turn it on. Those are best, great. Right? Yeah. I have one of those. It's amazing. Yeah, but, you know, you puncture them. Then you wake up and you're sleeping down this in one like was a like, plastic. You got to get the double ones. Like the double the double wide high ones. Oh, and then yeah, yeah. I had nice sheets, my own blankets, my own pillow. So I literally just needed a bit of floor space in 10 minutes. Not even. And I would like... Have my bed. Yeah. Because if you if you don't get good sleep on the road, like, you're fucked. It's like, you shitty, need yeah. to have just to keep going. Because oh, it's yeah. a grind, man. Driving, yeah. It's just a grind. It's fun, but fun is exhausting. No, that's at, true. At two months, it, at, like, the last two weeks was, like, I was, like, I was about ready to come apart. Oh, really? Just from the garbage eating, too much coffee. I'm not, I, it didn't work out, like, once in three months. Well, yeah. how, many, how many hours a day did you drive on average? Uh, it changed because I try to structure it where each drive wasn't going to be more than like six to eight hours. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, I, Covina and then San Diego to Phoenix to like Pueblo to like Denver. Like it was all like not too bad. Like right. the most, the biggest drive was like eight hours. Phoenix to Pueblo though. Isn't that a, uh, it was like six hours. I think this oh, was okay. all very well planned. Yeah. It was like the tour of 10,000 fucking Facebook messages. I was on <laughs> Facebook for like a, like probably at least a month just like trying to figure this out uh but like and once i hit the south like because i wanted to do hell yes fest so i was gonna go from like dc to like the carolinas you know and just loop so do a giant big circle uh-huh. but i had to go from dc to new orleans and then after that i was bouncing around the south like a goddamn pinball machine oh okay just, just, just like over. it was just like four hours i went through chattanooga so many times and like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean i don't know i i would say on average probably like four to five hours oh it's not too bad but then i would go to a place and a lot of times, friends of ours have like done tours, and they would stay in a place for like a day. But I didn't want to do that. So like when I went to Omaha, like I stayed for like three, four days, yeah. and I did like every single show in Omaha, you know. And That's so I great. would always like try and stay in a place because part of it was just I've never been to Omaha, and I want to spend more than one night in Omaha. And you know what? It was like Omaha is actually a really rad town. Yeah, yeah, surprisingly rad. Yeah. What, what do you recommend in Omaha? Uh, there's this beer cade place. Uh, where they have it's one of those bar arcades, but it's just they have root beer on tap as well and skee ball, which most bar arcades yeah. don't have skee ball. Oh wow, which is that's perfect. A real big mistake. Yeah, yeah. I, it's always in my experience a mutually exclusive sort of thing. There's bars with the skee ball machine, and then there's the barcades, but never do they twain. Well, the skee ball you know, has to have the good prizes though. Like when I was young, we won the Dusty Rhodes action figure playing skee ball. This one, like it was great. They had prizes where you like you get the thing, you get like a beer or something like that. So I was like. Done, but well, I find it's easier with women. Like girls will play skee ball a lot. Is it? They is, won't always play video games, but they love playing skee ball. So it's it, a great way of like kind of breaking the ice with mm. ladies. Is Scranton near Shamokin? Yeah, because Shamokin I always find is the place that makes all the skee ball tickets. Shut up! No yeah, way. Yeah, if you go, like I remember. <laughs> My roommate and I had this thing because there was a number of bars in... Uh, As king of Scranton, I am <laughs> learning knowledge that I didn't that, know. Yeah, yeah that there was... That, um, that my, my roommate and I were, when I lived in New York, were big on playing skee-ball at bars, and there's a few bars that had them. Big on looking at the tickets very and the closely, ticket. Well, apparently. you would get the tickets, but you wouldn't really use them for anything. And they were all from Shamokin, and we did the research. And apparently, yeah, apparently Shamokin, <laughs> capital of skee-ball tickets, you know? You wanted wow. it here first? Yeah. I found out that most of the disco balls made in America are made in Louisville, Kentucky. There you go. Louisville, you Kentucky. You think we would have enough disco balls by now? Yeah, you would think, but <laughs> no. <laughs> like they, were, they had made so many, and they're like that well, people are still ordering them. Maybe they break them. easily or something if, you know, if they fall down. I've never seen a like disco that. ball at a thrift shop. And I go to thrift shops a lot. I've never seen one hanging there. God, so. that's a great point. I've seen the cheap ones you can get at home and oh, all that. Oh, the little ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just break a mirror, right? I get like a, <laughs> a basketball that I soak in Elmer's glue, and then I run <laughs> well, that around the, the mirror, mirror yeah. and then boom, you got a homemade disco ball. Yeah, just hang it from the ceiling and sell it on a Etsy for $75. On <laughs> My middle school had a disco ball. Really? Yeah, in the gym. Where did you go? It was- Funky Town High? Because <laughs> <laughs> that was the big thing. The... the- <laughs> The, whenever we would pay, my whenever, middle school didn't have a baseball team. For fuck's sake! Yeah. Well, well, all highs. we had, all we had, was a disco ball. And the, I remember uh, the coach, just Coach Watson, just being like, "Boys, if you hit that disco ball when you play 
dodgeball. I swear to God, it's your ass. <laughs> you know, we used to. I went to a uh, Catholic middle school. We didn't play dodgeball. We played Resurrection. What? <laughs> Yeah, so Sorry. You, it would be just you like to roll a big basketball out in front of a cave. Or something? <laughs> <laughs> you would, so, like, let's say I got I threw the ball and I got Rivers out, right? And let's say I got you out, uh, Mister Goodnight. And then let's say I'd, Pat, stay out, I'd stay out for three days. And you guys know you guys would be out of the game. Yeah. I wasn't even moving. Let's I was say Pat there got me out. If Pat got me out, then you two would come back in. Oh. So you'd have that. So actually, it was an amazing game because you'd have that one guy who's really good, and then it would just be like maybe him left, and then you'd get him out, and then the other team would all come back. So the games would last forever, and you had to like keep track of like. But they called it resurrection, <laughs> <laughs> which looking back was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it makes dodgeball so much more fun. Yeah. That sounds like fun. <laughs> when I was in uh, Boy Scouts, we had a game. I don't think there was a name for the game. It was just the rope <laughs> the rope game. Is this like a perverted thing or something? <laughs> no, no. You just It's pretty fun, but it was just basically organized fighting uh, <laughs> where you would stretch a rope out like straight and you'd have half the troop on one side and the other half on the other side. And then the goal is just to grab somebody with, and pull them over. To the, other, to the other side of the rope. So the whole so like, I think it's called tug of war everywhere else. Oh, no, but it's like you're no, pulling no, no, the no. body over. No, the rope, you don't, you're not tugging on the rope. The rope is just the a rope boundary. The rope is just on the ground. It's just a boundary. So half, this, half the squad is on one side, half is the other, and you're just, you're just basically ripped. So you're trying to get close to pull someone over to your side. Exactly. But, but then, then you don't want to get pulled at the yeah. same time. That was a great that game. That sounds like uh, <laughs> terrifying. It was, it was terrifying, but also, uh, you know, I was, I was one of the bigger kids, so it was fun for me. Uh, <laughs> so you were the rope champ. Champion of, of Auburn. Oh, Alabama. dude, I grabbed two kids at once and ripped them off, uh, ripped them over to my side. And it was fun because once you get pulled over to the other side, it's not like you're out. You just got to turn around and then start pulling your oh, other people out. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was like a big fight. With it was like an organized head. fight. Yeah, exactly. That does sound like fun. It was that a lot does of sound fun. like a sport you'd only find in the South. <laughs> yeah. The deep South. <laughs> the rope game. Lay down the rope. With rope. the Boy Scouts, no less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That built, it builds character, I suppose. It, it does, yeah. We used to do. Um, tie wedgie fights where because i went to you know catholic middle school and you have to wear a tie awful awful uniform we had brown pants a bright yellow shirt and then a brown and yellow plaid tie oh so you guys were all dressed like dwight Schrute. yeah (laughs) really it was just awful and so we would go up me and john seeger you you, we had this back of the room where you used to hang your coats and your hooks and we'd look at each other we go to the back of the room and you'd have to like try and protect your tie and get the other guy's tie yeah and pull it and i remember we'd get these massive fights and we'd just be yanking on the tie (laughs) So much so that I would have to go home at the end of the day and then get my dad's Phillips screwdriver <laughs> oh, to pry the knot out. And my oh, mom was shit. like, what are you doing with your ties? <laughs> Why are they like this? I'm like, oh, I just tied it wrong. And it's like these balls that are like hardcore. Yeah. I'm like putting a hammer. I'm hammering in a screwdriver to get the knot out. It took me like 20 minutes one day. Uh, Man, when I was done, we just sharpen up sticks and fight with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the one day, though, and I still have it. I still have it as a trophy. The one day we were doing it, I went to grab his tie, and I missed – but my fingers caught his shirt pocket, uh-huh. and I ripped his shirt pocket <laughs> off. And forever, I always had this trophy. I would like hold up and show it to him in class. <laughs> like weeks later, be like, "I got your pocket, bitch." <laughs> oh, Still have it. I will you never should get make rid it of in that. like a necklace or something. Yeah. Wear like a, a trophy, like an Indian warrior or some shit. <laughs> would have sewed onto my shirt, gave myself another pocket. <laughs> I used to give the the kids the flat tire where you step on the back of the shoe and all that shit. Oh, I remember. You uh, messed you with this little devil, right? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. But I did it to one kid who was wearing Birkenstocks just to be an asshole, and like the oh. fucking shoes like ripped. And he just turned around and was like, God damn it! Like, <laughs> <laughs> See a kid lose it. Yeah. We had uh, Billy Malacarney the one day. He was he had those Air Jordans, or, or he might have had the knockoff ones. But you remember, like, you know, he used to pump them. He had the, the air and the, yeah, the, the sneaker. Pump. The, the and pump. He, he had a pen, and he was just, like, kind of taking his pen, and he was, like, kind of kept hitting that little air bubble in the sole of the shoe. Yeah. Like, in class, and we were, like, study hall, so it was really quiet. And then all of a sudden, he hits it really hard, and all you hear is... <laughs> and it just doesn't stop. <laughs> and Mrs. Reed was like, what is that? What is that sound? <laughs> what is that sound? And she, was, she could not place it, and Billy <laughs> is, like, losing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm losing. What is that? What is? <laughs> it just it just like goes on for like a fucking minute until it finally all the air gets out of it. And we and then he's like, oh man, I fucked up my shoes. 
he show up the next day with a band aid on his face? Hundred dollar shoes. <laughs> What what was the best road food? Like what what state? Uh, homegrown, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Ooh. The uh, f- fried chicken on, with biscuits and gravy. One of the best, not only one of the best meals of the trip, but one of the best meals I've ever had. Bro, homegrown's amazing. I've it was so there. good. Yeah. I'm going uh, Dave, back in April. I'm going to go. Do it. You know Dave Stone? Yeah, of course. He was down there, and I guess when he was there. Out of the 22 meals he ate in Atlanta, like 19 of them were at this restaurant <laughs> called Homegrown. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, that one was one of the best. Um, God, I had some fucking great – like, I honestly – I used to eat at the roadside stands. Like, the more nondescript, the better. I ate at the in Brobridge, Louisiana. I went and got crawfish. Ooh, yeah. First mm-hmm. time having that, they served it on like a – God, it was like a lid the size of a garbage can lid. Come out with it full of like, it, this is just for me. This is like the lunch portion. Right. And it was filled with like corn on the cob and like potatoes and crawfish. And yeah. like the lady sits it down and I'm like, hey, Susan, um, can you show me how to eat this? And so she has to show me how to eat them. <laughs> got to suck the, suck the, the brains out. Suck the brains, yeah. Loved it. It was great. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm getting hungry just thinking about this shit. Yeah. I, think, I had some, uh, I ate at the Waffle House a bunch, and I had my, I had my yeah. order smothered, covered, in, you know, with the little jalapenos inside, uh, diced oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that place, that place was awesome. That was, it was a great place to go just for a quick snack, and it was like five, six bucks. Yeah, Waffle House is always good. And, if and you, always uh, cheap. Yeah. And always oh, open. Always open. I had some exactly. great food in Austin. Man, Austin is such a great food scene. That's, that's probably one heard. of the best pastrami sandwiches I've ever had. Ooh. Um, yeah. God, this, this place called like Eagle's Nest, I think. And it was in downtown. And they like, I remember eating it. I'm like, this is so fucking good. That was like, the, that was one of the best parts. My favorite thing to do when I travel is just eat. Yeah, and yeah so me too. <laughs> I like to just define like what's the thing. Yeah, where yeah, you just like go and, to the gas station and, and be like, where do you eat? <laughs> I've been trying to work on a, a like a joke. I haven't cracked it yet, but it's it's basically the premise is like it's never like oh dude, you got to go try our salads. Oh, like yeah. it's always like the most aggressively <laughs> unhealthy. Do you want to defy God? Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> it's just food that makes you like hurt or like makes your body feel like it's going to war. Like it's just. <laughs> Just all this garbage food. And it was I just only delicious. eat stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and look at me now. Mm-hmm. I was, like a million bucks. <laughs> I was so thankful for California. I was like, oh, man, we really do have like a lot of fresh fruit. And I realized that that is not the case in a lot of places. Like People would give me an orange, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's yeah. This dry, yeah. like fleshy-colored orb <laughs> full of seeds and just rind. And they're like, it's an orange. And I'm like, that is not an orange. That's not an orange. That's not right. <laughs> Mm. But man, yeah, the South was definitely like, I mean, I loved grits. I loved it all. The South was probably my most like food, like I blew my mind. But it also it, it just it, like my one point I started getting nervous because my heart was hurting a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like it was hurting. That happens sometimes. And you just got to play through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like going into the, going into places and then be like, why are you guys selling boiled peanuts? Like just the weirdest. Like, oh, Rivers makes those things by uh, the yeah, truckload. I, I and then I try them and I'm like, they're actually pretty dude, good. They're great. <laughs> that, dude, that's the best. Ro- like, in, like in my head, boiled peanuts are always, and I always make them for. Oh, yeah. I did not eat that in that car. I was like, I have not oh, bringing no? Boiled peanuts. It, oh, not in a seventy-five Benz. That's not mine. I'm not going to bring like a pool of salty liquid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to go to the beach with my family, and we passed through this town called Bay Manette. And Bay Manette is the county seat of Baldwin County, Alabama, just on the other side of the bay from Mobile. And uh, the one fun fact I have about Bay Manette: the county seat of Baldwin County used to be Daphne. And at some point in the early 1900s, the it people, the, or the, people like the people of Bay Manette marched into Daphne, stormed the courthouse, stole the county charter and all of the documents, and just marched them back to Bay Manette. Like, they aggressively took over as the county seat of this. Was it a crusade Whoa. or something? What the hell happened? Like, they were just, they just had it. Those motherfuckers. <laughs> Literally, they were like, they, 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 they fucking around for the last time. You go get your kin, I'll get my kin, fuck them. And then they marched into the town and just wow. took control. But, but we always... Involve- Boiled peanuts. Yeah, we always used to stop in Bay Manette and they had the Bay Manette Farmer's Market, grab the boiled peanuts, and then you just sit there and open the window and then just eat them and throw the shells out the window all the way to the beach. Well, That's- there's a there's a hierarchy if you're looking for boiled peanuts on the road. If you look at the signs, 
if it says boiled peanuts as a full like sort of yeah, or don't peanuts, eat them. don't eat them. It's They're not that pee good. Pee hyphen nut. That's the thing. <laughs> wow. If it says goobers, yeah, don't even... do it. It's like way too exotic. Oh, you know who had also had great food was uh, New Orleans. Oh, oh, yeah. New Orleans blew my mind of how because I mean, it wasn't just good food, but it was like good food, a lot of it, and it was still incredibly cheap. Yeah. Did you go to like Acme Oyster House or anything like that? I went to the um I went to this one place where uh, Beyonce goes. Oh. Um, it's oh. her favorite sandwich shop, uh, <laughs> which I found out after. She was actually there the weekend I was there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we hung for a little bit. Uh, her sister was getting married, and I, they were like, Beyonce was in here last night, and it's this like shrimp po' boy, or like this like po' boy sandwich place. It was so good, but you walk in, and you're like, this is the dirtiest place yeah. I have ever seen. <laughs> like, it looked... Like they just were like, nah, we don't sweep. Like, yeah, ever. yeah. And, but it was like the best sandwich I ever. I actually drove back to New Orleans just to get a sandwich. There. <laughs> oh shit! I'm blanking on the name of the place. Yeah, but man, that town. But we can look it so up good. because Beyonce was there the night before. Yeah, Beyonce's favorite po' boy restaurant. Oh, those are always up. the best though. When you walk into a place and you're like, oh my god, they haven't cleaned this place since 1970 it's fucking two. Yeah, you know it's about to. Be those good. are my favorite kind of places to go to. Yeah. yeah, if the newspaper articles are stapled on the wall and they're yellow. Yeah, Dude, if I, they never ever change the grease, so it's the same grease that it's always been yeah yeah it's gonna be good yeah all that flavor So, Ron, what was the what was the best city to perform in, and what was the worst one? <laughs> uh, worst off the bat, Auburn, Alabama. There yeah. you go, Rivers. Real Woo. garbage. <laughs> Real. Uh, uh, oh, without a doubt. Damn eagle. Right off the hip there. So let, let's uh, let, let's run down. First of all, where'd you eat in Auburn, if you remember? Uh, I didn't. Got out of that got city of as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you performed at the Balcony Bar, is that right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't want to blame Auburn too much, but it was a night you, where <laughs> it was cold. It was a particular cold it was during that polar vortex yeah. and it was insanely rainy yeah and then the only people who were there were exceedingly drunk <laughs> and there was on uh, no stage because why would you need that yeah and yeah. there weren't really stage lights there was light <laughs> well, i didn't say it was directed at the stage <laughs> um there was a bunch of like lights on in the back that were extremely bright like you know that would be over a pool table at which point yeah. i had to tell the guy running i was like hey maybe we should turn those lights off to try and focus the attention yeah uh, and it was one of those audiences where they didn't laugh they just um, vocally agreed with you. Like, instead of laughing, <laughs> they'd be oh, like, hell no. Oh, you are right. You are right. I don't like that. Oh, I don't like you. You're right. I'm going to buy you a drink. And you're like, I <laughs> literally just started, and I have at least another 30 to 40 of this. Oh, I remember I had tightened that set up. They're like, you don't need to do 40. I'm like, ah, thank you. <laughs> Jesus. But what it was, was the name of the bar? It was just not like there's Affirmation or something? I don't know. It was, I think it was Balcony Bar. <laughs> yeah. And there was a, the guy who was the local and he would just show up and it, with a backpack with baby squirrels inside of it. And what? he would show the baby squirrels to co eds. Wait. And, uh, wait, was it an older guy? Yeah, idea. of course it's that's an older guy. You know who, the, you know who this is, right? right? Nobody's well, got a good I, pickup. I can't wait to drop this because he's come up on the show before. The man he's speaking about is Roadkill. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> Roadkill. Yeah. Whoa, so whoa, 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 whoa. He's not going to run over them squirrels later no, on. Do you remember it? on the show I was talking about the guy when I was at line at the Waffle House, the guy singing, Don't come around here no more yeah. and staring right into my eyes with murder? Yeah. That guy. That's who he's talking about, the motherfucker with the squirrels. I would, and I kept. Richard. I kept smack. He would small, say something, and I'd smack him down, and it just would not register. Like, I would, like, burn him, and everybody would laugh, and then he'd be like, well, and then I'd yeah. start talking to him. He's like, why are you talking to me? And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Did he show you his plate? No, I got. I didn't stick around long enough. I was like, and I'm done. Good night. Good night. Immediately, like, jump out the window, <laughs> through the windshield of my car, and drive away. Yeah, what that, is this plate? Yeah, so Richard, his whole thing is, uh, his real name is Richard, uh, but he goes by Richard or Roadkill, and he carries around uh, one of those plates with Jesus on it. I don't know why you have those, but for the Last know, Supper, in case it comes. Up. Right, the ones you normally your grandma would like hang on the wall, you know, one of those. And except that in Jesus, you know how Jesus will have his hands kind of like outstretched, like you know, with palm facing up, kind of thing. Uh, he's added two Confederate pistols. Oh, uh, wow. And Jesus, instead of a heart in the middle of his chest, has a Confederate flag, and is wearing a hat with a weed symbol on it, <laughs> and. 
<laughs> he, he carries around the plate and uh, and basically just uses it to roll joints on. But he's always got it. It's just cool that he has a plate that literally has all his favorite things. <laughs> Jesus, the Confederacy, and weed. I yeah. think I want to meet and this pistols. guy. <laughs> and pistols. Old antique pistols. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think we get a lot of similar interests. <laughs> <laughs> Were they called navies or called armies? That's what I want to know. I don't know. It it, was, he drew them himself. Was so. it a Griswold and Gunnison? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that was like the worst. I think the best. Um, God, it's hard. I had a lot of fun in so many different cities. I want to hear about Tuscaloosa also. Uh, our- oh, Tuscaloosa was fun. Yeah. It was so weird. I- it was a house party show. And it was, again, it was another, like, they do this. Ho- I did a lot of living room shows, which I actually really like. Because yeah. I find that living room shows are people are like, hey, we're going to have a party. So you know there's going to be, like, 30 to 50 people there. Yeah. Like, but we're going to do this comedy show for, like, an hour. And people will come, and they'll watch, and it's different, and it's weird. But it has, it's not that same pressure of a comedy club. Right. And it's fun. And so. Did they pay you for doing the shows? or Oh, just, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I always got paid for yeah. shows. Oh, like, it, great. Would, it would be, you know, a sliding scale. And a lot of times I would sell merch. But, like, for that one. It was like, yeah, it's like last time we did this, we had like 40 people here. Everyone was really into it. I was like, that's going to be great. Polar Vortex outside. And I had said to them, I'm like, hey, are we going to do this inside? And they're like, no, we're going to do it outside. And I'm like, <laughs> Ugh. okay, so no one's coming. And then no one came and um, did a lot of comics. And of the few women that were there, the comics going up were just like, here's another thing that's dumb about bitches. And you just see <laughs> these girls who were there for like two comics and then they left and they're like, oh, no, no. Why people don't come to this? I'm like, maybe because women don't like being yelled at about how they're skanky whores. Like, See, that's it's, just dumb because if you're doing a living room show, if you don't get laid doing it, it feels like you haven't accomplished something. It, it, so I remember doing it and there was this kid there, some fucking millennial. And I remember he just was such – he was being such a dick. He was on uh, he was on ketamine. Yeah, I uh, didn't know that. I thought he was yeah. just being a dick, but apparently uh, he was on special ketamine. My, my friend time. Nick Thomas filled me in on the details with that. And, and his mom <laughs> dropped him off Nick at the Thomas. show. So yeah, he, he was, was being real, like, a lot of swagger. And I'm like, dude, you can't be that much swagger when your mom drops you <laughs> off at the show. Because <laughs> he was, like, 19. and But actually – I don't know. I remember seeing the Black Lips getting dropped off by their moms before a show. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun on that show. Like, if you're like, Ron, I need you to go up on stage and make fun of a 19 year old <laughs> like you need to put a 19 year old millennial in his place yeah i think i told one joke that whole set oh. i just because he just kept you know he I, I was like is this kid on drugs i guess he was yeah. i had no idea i yeah, thought he yeah. was just but it was i actually had a lot of fun on that show okay <laughs> so the best and the worst were in alabama Sometimes the worst can't be the best. Yeah. You know, once you kind of. Paradox again. Once you put it, once you. That's the thing is, like, you realize that these shows, like, nobody really, like, knows who I am. Like, there's, yeah, some comics do. And, like, I'll pull a couple of people once in a while. Yeah. But I'm not, like, a a name by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, some shows, when people go out, they just want to see comedy. And sometimes they're just the weather. There's a game on. You know, comedy's going to lose. Yeah. Like, you could. Some of those nights, for me at least can be like the most fun nights because it's like it doesn't matter yeah so then you can get like really weird and and take chances and try things and then the the 15 people who did come to see you will be like that was fucking amazing yeah and the next time you go back they'll bring and then i mean i walked into a show the whole reason i did this tour the entire reason was i wanted to submit a uh, submission to comedy central for a half hour yeah and most guys will do it around town once and then they submit that i was like oh what if i went on the road and did that like 10 times yeah well, like one thing led to another and all of a sudden it ended up being like three months because i also visited family along the way because right, they were right. all in cities i Didn't went you to do, like christmas at, at home and stuff like that no i got back before christmas and then i i got oh, back okay. and then i immediately went home for christmas but i was trying to get this tape and it was really frustrating because you know you never get a tape that 100 percent represents you yeah you like for whatever reason like i don't know the guys would be the the sound system w- w- would be shitty. Um, the crowd wouldn't be there. There'd be a guy yelling the whole time. Like it just yeah. it the stars didn't align. I had tapes that were like maybe seventy percent, but like or the one girl it's was sitting next to the recorder shoot. and then she was laughing so hard the whole time it ruined the whole tape. Or yeah. like everything was perfect. Then that guy just so all of a sudden started dropping his glasses. Like it just <laughs> was one thing after another. Yeah. And then the last night and it, I just thought it was just going to be a random show. Uh, it was sure thing in Austin. And it was like my, one of my last shows of the entire tour. And I was like, oh, I guess I didn't get a tape. Like I had a tape that was like maybe 70%. Yeah. And I go in and the guy's like, oh, yeah, man, pretty, uh, I think it's going to be a good show. And I'm like, 
oh, yeah, how much how much time am I doing? He's like, we're just gonna have you do a half hour. Is that cool? I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah. So for for and for, then he like you know sold out show and it all came together and you got the tape and that for, was like last show for the those of us really yeah. for, for that people that are happen. listening that don't know how is the whole process with. Um, Submitting to Comedy Central kind of go, just in the kind of well, a thumbnail. You, you kind of just, you know, uh, last year they asked me to submit, and I went home, and I did a show, and I taped it, and um, it was in kind of a really good show. It was 20 kids from my high school came out. My mom was there. It was a real kind of like welcome home thing, uh, and the camera died three minutes into the set. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, that one hurt. God. And so you pretty much just send in a tape, and it's just a tape where you they see you, and you um, they hear you. And you send in a tape of like, hey, if you gave me this opportunity, here's the here's jokes would look that like. I would do. Yeah. And you know, you, I think that they're they're fine with like you. They understand it's a live show. You got to respond to things. They're not going to be like, oh, look at him doing crowd work. Like, right? Like, it's like you want to really give a good representation of what you would do. But like, I think they understand. Like, hey, we get it. You know, you're you're there to you're hired to work a club. You got to do the job. And then you send it in, and uh, they watch it. And if they like you, they get back to you. Hmm. You know, and yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Like it's it's just like an audition, and they they watch them all. They I have friends who've worked there, and they sit around a table and they watch every single wow. s- submission. And Man. you know, I mean, and there's a guy like Adam Newman last year. He was like kind of a guy who just sent in a tape, and he got a set. And like it's a, <laughs> I mean, I would, I mean, I grew up watching Comedy Central Half Hour, Comedy Central Presents. So yeah, for me, it would just be like that's huge. Yeah, it would be huge. It'd be the, I think it'd be like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Did you? Have you heard Adam Newman's thing about having to open up for the owl? No. <laughs> he didn't open up for an owl. I don't want to fuck up his, his thing, but the owl's name was Hootie. <laughs> Actually, I think I did love this. Yeah, and then Adam, just, the, just the beginning of the, uh, the setup, he's just like, and Hootie fucking destroyed. <laughs> and to follow an oh, owl. Man. A trained owl. And what did they, did they all just... They would play Who Let the Dogs Out, and the owl oh. would go... Oh, so no. it's like it's kind of like a hate beat that. sort of thing. Well, and that's yeah. why you don't want to work with animals or nor kids. Yep, that's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, there's just some stuff like that where you just like ugh, those novelty kind of acts are just like they're so simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know what's coming. I'm Say thinking it. of getting me an owl. <laughs> you need a falcon. That's yeah, that's right. I could just do falconry. Didn't yeah. stage. That's a good idea. Uh, Would have killed in the Middle Ages. Didn't Masada tell you you get a head? <laughs> yeah, I told me to you ha- carry a severed head. <laughs> What? And I talked him down to like a voodoo head <laughs> or a skull. Why or did something. he tell you to get Who's a head? It? Masada over at the yeah, Laugh Factory? Laugh Factory. He would always say, he was like, This is what I want you to do. You know, there was one comedian, he had this sausage and he just held the sausage. <laughs> But you should go out there and you should just have a severed head in your head. Just <laughs> holding this head. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, uh, not like a, da- a head. That is and I was just... like, that sounds kind of gruesome. Yeah, yeah, the trainer. severed head comedian. <laughs> I, could, I, could wrap my, I could wrap my head around that. I'm just kidding. Uh, where, where did he propose you get this head? I don't know. His? I mean, you tell me. Maybe he's got some in the back there. Because... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's... That's Th- showbiz. That's, that's what happened. Yeah, that's showbiz. That's my favorite now. Is I know a lot of comics hate it, but my favorite now is whenever I do a show, and this is all the time, people come up, I got a joke you could use, and I'm like, <gasps> tell me. <laughs> I get it. And it's some long-winded, oh, three-part the show, and I, I know comics hate it, but they're so bad that I'm like, and I laugh my ass off Oh yeah, every single time I heard one. Oh, dude, uh, I I, uh, I drive a tour van for a living. I, as soon as you tell them. My... I forgot you do the tour van stuff. Oh, yeah. I I still got to take you up on your tour offer. Oh, absolutely, Will you give man. my girlfriend and I a tour? Dude, fuck yeah, I will. That All would, right. That would be great. Because you know I love that stuff. All oh, that yeah. local LA I, history. I, I can tell you, Rivers is good. Oh, yeah. I, I can Very. guarantee. He, he toured me around Auburn. Now I know where all three things there are. I know. I, gave, <laughs> I took him to the War Memorial, the Confederate War Memorial. That's and then I that nice see. campus building. That's right. That yeah, one and nice the campus Jackson. building. Sanford yeah, Hall. Yeah. And Bo Jackson. I got Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson statue. Yep. I'm good. And the Cam Newton statue. Yeah, and maybe um, a mellow mushroom or some shit like that's that. That's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, my my buddy Kevin Macias, huh? who's uh, done the show before. Hi, Kevin. Um, hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, he, he's from here. So when they ask him, like, oh, what brought you out to Hollywood? He can just go, oh, I live here. But when they ask me, I'm like, oh, I'm t- you know, stand-up comedy. That's my night my nighttime job or whatever. And then he goes, oh, oh, we're oh, going to be a handful it. here. We're going to definitely end up in your act. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that said, uh, this week, uh, I was driving around this group from New York, and they were like the kind of family, their entire family dynamic, the, the, the engine, the driving force of their family was arguing with each other, and it was oh. fucking yeah, hilarious. Yeah, it's like Moonstruck kind of. It was yeah. so funny. Like It was, oh like, it was like good-natured, but like they were just like, you're just killing me. You're killing me over here. And like they, they would just fight with 
fight with each other. And uh, we were standing at the Hollywood sign, looking up at it, <clears throat> and it was a a mom, her si- uh, like a mom and two kids and her sister. And the sister was the one who had organized the whole thing, and like they resented her. I had her for two days actually. The first day we just did a cemetery tour, and mm-hmm. uh, in the you could tell the aunt was the only one that wanted to go to the cemeteries. <laughs> And so they were just like, why are we just looking at graves here? This is stupid. She's like, I like it. So that was the first day. Please tell me they tip you. Oh, yeah. They tip me very well. Oh, that's good. But we're standing up and uh, we're looking at the Hollywood sign. And the mom with the two kids, she looks up at the sign. And I swear to God, goes, hey, where are the heads? I was like, excuse me? She goes, the heads. The president's heads. Where are the heads? Oh my god! <laughs> I swear to God! And I was like, "Oh no! Do you you're mean- allowed to vote? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You exactly. vote. Yeah, you make decisions. Yeah, she voted for Mitt Romney. She told me um, <laughs> many times. <laughs> yeah, it just went from morbid to like morbid in a complete. It was insane. And I was like, "Do you mean Mount Rushmore?" I was like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "What? I'm a nurse." Like I like science. Yeah, nurse. Yeah. She goes, I'm a science person. I don't do this social studies. You it's mean like these called it basic social tenets of our? I was like, that's on the citizenship test. <laughs> like that's like Mount Rushmore. Part of our cultural vernacular, is right? Like, Mount Rushmore. It's the only well, thing. She probably, she probably, you don't know what state it's in. That's There's not fine. that much shit to see in New York. So she probably says, okay. So you get to the rest of the country. They got the Hollywood sign. They got Mount Rushmore, and they that's got the Grand the Canyon. West. Man, New York. They're so, right next to each other. New York would be great if it wasn't for all those fucking New Yorkers who live there. The funniest shit. So, was her ugh. kids, dude, her kids were, were like giving her the fucking business the rest of the day. It was so funny. They're like, Jesus, I can't even believe I'm related to you. And she, at one point, she goes, <laughs> she was like, what? I'm sorry. And then like they were just still fucking with her and she was getting pissed. And How old she, were the kids? Uh, they were like 13 and oh, like 16. Uh, perfect. perfect age. She really was just fucking Are they her. listening right now? I hope so. I hope you uh, gave them a card or something it so they was, can hear all this. God, it was so funny. So they can be like, they're using us in, our, in, his, in his jokes, Henry. <laughs> He, he, at one point, uh, the kids were still like talking shit, and she goes, Insignificant. That was the word. That's what you are to me. Insignificant. Wow. <laughs> I love LA. I love Austin. Austin. That's the show where I finally got my tape, and the next day, uh, my girlfriend, who I met a week before I went on tour, and we kept in touch throughout the entire tour, just like kind of texting and calling and stuff, and like she actually. It was weird. We went on two days before I left, and then uh, I did that Sure Thing show, best show of the tour for me. Yeah. And then the next day, uh, she flew in, and that was our third day was her flying into Austin wow. to visit me. Oh, and nice. It was weird, and it was like, when I was like, you should come visit me. She's like, yeah. And then all of a sudden, like the day before, she's like, so um, I'm coming to Austin for a few days. And then we like, not, it was a little, like, we were both like, oh, yeah, that is kind of weird. And then we knocked it out of the park, and... Yeah. Now we're all in love and shit. Aww. And it's disgusting. That's yeah. awesome. So you got like a, a vacation from your vacation. Yeah. And yeah. it was great. It was actually really nice to be able to spend time with someone. Because a lot of it, you're on your you're own. You're by yourself the whole time, right? Which is, I like being by myself. But after like yeah. two and a half months, I was ready to kind of I'm like the same way, man. spend some no, quality time dri- with people. You're driving a car. You're seeing this country. And you, and you fall in love the whole time. There you go. You I'm go, telling like, you, man. That's out of American LA. Green. Yeah. Like, I can. I'd say I'm writing a big post about it on uh-huh. how to do it, and like, but it's like I think it's real. It made me. First of all, I had a great time. You know, I, even if I didn't break even, even if the car broke down, even if I lost a ton of money, at the end of the day, it made me such a better comedian, a stronger and more confident performer. And I just, I had a great time. Even if the comedy didn't go well, I still had an awesome time seeing the country. Not to spoil the blog post, but if you, if any comics are listening, uh, what are a couple of points that you would make if somebody wants to do what you did? Uh, I would say, uh, one, um, if you want to at least make a little bit of money, you got to sell some kind of merch. Yeah. You got to get over that whole, like, for some reason, comics are like, fucking selling merch. So I never got that. Yeah. Like, to me, punk bands sell merch like crazy. Yeah. And yeah. They're punk so bands. That's how you make your money. So you got to sell something. So what were your merch? Um, like, I, double I, sticks or something like no, that? No, I, I do <laughs> not do that bit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that was awesome. Uh, Dude. I actually, I went, I'm really into, like, making shit. So I actually 
took a little old suitcase and uh-huh. I turned that into like a, a little store. Oh, cool. Thereby turning me into the Willie Loman of stand-up comedy. Oh, no, that's oh, hilarious. Yeah. Uh, I but that. I sold um, two different kinds of T-shirts. I went crazy, uh, but I really dropped my shoulder into it. And I, I looked at – I did buttons and magnets, which are cheap as fuck. Yeah. I had stickers. I had some holy fuck CDs that Dave Ross gave to me. Uh-huh. And then I also had um, some posters and stuff and uh, beer koozies. And – I've learned a lot about what I would do, but like t-shirts are definitely, you want to have something like t-shirts, 20 bucks. So you never have to make change, get square, get, get PayPal, get something for your card. I, half my sales were from credit cards and they take a cut, but you know what? That's money that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Oh, yeah. So you want to have like a t-shirt. So if people have money and then you want to have something for people who don't have a lot of money, but they want to support you. I sold so many koozies for three bucks and that's just people just being like, I like what you're doing. Give me a koozie. That's you know, great. And that's just a way so because people want to help you. Yeah, and you yeah. got to give them opportunities yeah. for you to help. So I would say, uh, one is sell merch. Two, make sure to have like a nice air bed because if you don't get good sleep, yeah, you are not going to survive. Right. Uh, and three, I'd say like um, there's a way to promote it online without being a, a dick about you know how people sometimes promote stuff and you're like okay man we get it right you just got to find that line so i just like got my little hashtag and i would just put photos up and i would try and make them interesting and people like enjoy it and i try not to over post because i, I kind of hate when people do that right and, right but i think it's like it's it's important like it's people really like watching you people like watching people have fun mm-hmm. yeah and it's yeah. not you being like this oh look at my cool life a lot of it can be just like I had so many people be like, I love that you did that. It really like kind of motivated me to try some stuff in oh, like, yeah. my own life. And so people I like it resonated with people in a way that I did not expect at all. But I think it's important to like kind of do that. And it's actually nice for you because by at the end of it you have this little journal, this yeah. visual journal of your time. So I would say like you pick one platform, whatever one you like, and you just put stuff on there. Yeah. You yeah. know, and uh I really enjoyed, yeah. yeah. Like I said, if you have to, you should really check out uh, at Hey Ron on Instagram. Yeah, hashtag the, uh, was uh, Benzit B E N Z I T. Yeah. It was a fun way of like filtering a city. Is I like going traveling with a purpose where it's like, oh, I guess I'll. T-. And that happened accidentally. I just started doing that, and people responded to it. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll do this. Jesus. Yeah. And then I, like every time I went to a new city, it was like, oh, I got to take a picture of the car someplace cool. So it became a really great way of like. Oh, so that was your idea. It wasn't even like Mercedes motoring. Or yeah, anything. I have a commercial that I shot for them. Yeah. That I'm editing. Uh, that's gonna be pretty tight when it's done. I put a GoPro on the front of the car. Oh, oh. cool. And I got every single. Like every like night, day, rain, fog, wow. like every single iteration, like desert forest the middle of a uh, fucking bourbon street in new orleans so i'm just gonna oh, set that to so a cool. song that's great yeah oh, damn. and give them like uh, this really cool thing and it's like uh so they're excited about that and then i'm gonna edit uh, like a tour and my goal is to edit like a, a road doc uh, like a stand-up comedy mixtape where every one of my bits is in a different city oh and then cool. like but it's like man i taped 82 shows and now i gotta watch myself oh boy (laughs) because i know how to edit so this is what i do for like a living yeah finance all this stuff (sighs) a lot of stuff man a lot of stuff i'd imagine promoting it on a so did you do the general sort of did you how did you do the promotion with the actual local uh you know what i I would go into i go into facebook and i would type in on the search bar i type in my friends who live in denver colorado Mm. and then i would just kind of message people who i thought would be interested in it um, I did the, I did podcasts like crazy before it started. I would do podcasts in town and yeah. a lot of times I was piggybacking on shows. So I would do, I did a mixture of clubs. I did a college. I did some festivals. I piggybacked on a lot of established shows and right. I would just come in and headline their show. And then I would occasionally do one offs and, um, you know, just some basic mechanics. You know, people always say like, Oh, I need a bio. I need a headshot. That's where you set up a Google drive. You set up a folder and yeah. you have all your shit in there. So that way you don't have to – people aren't waiting when it's like you just send them the you link them that has all your the, stuff, all your promos, all your press clippings. Like there's a way to make this easy on yourself rather than getting an email and then having to send it back. And then, well, do you have it in a, another kind? Like yeah. just have all that garbage up there on a Google link. Send that to them. That way it's like boom. You literally have everything. And I think if I did this again, I would spend more time on making sure I had like – because when they do, I got a lot of press, and they, people are like, I need, I need promo shots. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm going through iPhoto trying to find a photo of me from five years ago. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. high res enough. So it's like go through, do all that stuff before you leave because if people just want their jobs. They want their headaches taken care of. And yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. oh, gosh. Oh, we got this guy coming in. Look, I already got these photos. I already got this. Boom, boom, boom. You just, got, you just crossed off that guy's to-do for the day. 
Very, very organizational. Yeah. Very practical <sighs> advice. Though. Man, I could talk about this shit forever. That's awesome. There'll be a mega long blog post about it within the week at heyron.com. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my lifetime. No help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, this right. and we you didn't, on and we didn't, always a pleasure. And we didn't corner you and talk about Devil Sticks, which is yeah. the first time I saw Ron perform. <laughs> oh, man, those Devil he, Sticks bit took me so high. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can I actually won just, my esteem. Can we talk about that for one second? And he did it on stage. That's the great thing. Can about we talk about it. that one for the, Did you ever do that Renaissance Fair shit? No. But I always wanted to. Okay. Like, when I was in high school, my dream was to work at a renaissance Well, damn things are not historically <laughs> accurate. Because, oh, really? Well, no, yeah. If you went to the damn things, <laughs> you would think that, like, half of the renaissance economy was just based off juggling and shit. <laughs> <laughs> juggling yeah, and old... turkey legs. They didn't even yeah. have turkeys. <laughs> That's right. They didn't. I yeah. cannot deal with historical inaccuracies. Those aren't, like, are those, like, giant pig roast legs? Like, yeah, they are. They're, like. Turkey. Yeah, the turkey leg. Yeah, the yeah. turkey like, leg. Why is nobody going there dressed as. as, as they didn't as, even as have like turkeys so the Lorenzo to made a cheese yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, because turkeys were, uh, were a new American. Yeah, a new that's world a new thing. word, Burrow. I, I remember my, word. When, when I was in uh, seventh grade, we were studying the Middle Ages, and one of the homework assignments was we were supposed to do a list of jobs. And I never went to church, so I didn't know anything. So my, my list was artisan, merchant, saint. Uh, but then, like did the list Martyr. kept going. It and my was mom, in those days. And my mom had to pull me aside and be like, "Yeah, you have to be dead to be a saint." So that's not a job. You'd be like, "Mama, what, 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 it's a good job. I'm saying it's, it's a, a job. job. Mama, what would I be back then? I never went to church. You'd be burnt, River. <laughs> you'd, you'd be a head chick. <laughs> Cathar, that was a job back then. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash the goods pod at the goods pod on Twitter. Every episode ever at youtube.com slash the goods pod. Thank I you, am, Ron, again for coming. Yes, yeah, thank man, you yeah. so much. For, uh, he's going to drive out of here in his bands at the end of the night. Right. Right. No, the Honda. 1999 Honda CRV. Back to the oh, real world. A CRV. <laughs> yeah. CRV. Hell they don't yeah. age well. I got six cup holders. I got a table in the back. <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah, part pops. the floor pops out, becomes a table. The thing is an ice chest. <laughs> I crush a lot of pussy in the CRV. <laughs> <laughs> On the table sometimes. I went camping, and let's just say eh, it was the hero. You know, <laughs> We could have used an extra table, and I was like, I got one. <laughs> there are blew everybody's mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going back to uh, host the Waverly Boogie in Waverly, Alabama, and these guys are headlining. And the name of the band is American Aquarium. They're from Raleigh, North Carolina. Their brand new record is called Wolves, and this song is called Wichita Falls. <laughs> That's what I'll start a baby. That's what I'll start a falling apart. Friends, babe, 
Are you stuck in a ball with that other boy? Oh, you know the one I'm talking about. I won't bother you again, cause you know where I am. Just remember nothing good ever happens after Wichita Falls